annual Cherry and White game. I'm Zach Gelb along with Chase Sr. and our good friend Paul Palmer is also stopping by for 97.5. The Fanatics. Hello, Chicago hello, hello. During that. Paul, great <laughs> to see you. How are you? <laughs> I would say I would uh, text you right now, but I don't know if your number is uh, still saved in your phone because you told me that you dropped your phone in the toilet. Is that correct? Yes, and uh, Liv with her smart mouth said I was multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously I wasn't, doing, to do. I wasn't doing a very good job at all. So this is a Temple football team. You're one under Matt Rule. Only had two wins. Then in year number two, you get to six. We all know they didn't end up making it to that bowl game. But this is year number three. As you know, year number three, that's when really people judge and the expectation should be as high as ever. And the expectation to me is bowl game or bust. But on the offensive side of the ball, this was a unit that did struggle last year, and it all starts with the quarterback play. They have to limit the turnovers and convert inside the red zone. What do you want to see today out of P.J. Walker, and what do you think he needs to improve on going forward in his third year? I just, I just want to see improvement. I think last year, what he did last year was okay for a true freshman coming in. But as a, as a returning starter and a, and a second year guy in the offense, I think everyone kind of expected a little more from PJ. But, but, but at, in PJ's defense, the receivers have to give him some help. He's not always going to throw a perfect ball, just like they're not always going to be in a perfect position. But when the ball's thrown, you got to catch the ball, and when you catch the ball. You got to make someone miss. You got to get extra yards. And also, when it's a tough, a tough play, make a play. And if, if the receivers can help him a little bit, his numbers get better, their numbers get better, the offense gets better. So it's, it's kind of give and take. You got you to gotta help each other out. Because that Memphis game is the one game that really stands out to me where he had a really few good throws. A lot of drop One passes. in particular, too. I think it was Jamie Gilmore who just dropped it on, on the sideline yep. wide open. And you're right. Also, you know as a running back, you're the quarterback's best friend, and it seems like they have some serious players in the backfield this year. Oh, yeah, they've uh, <laughs> they've loaded up. you, you got to be careful I, of your, I know, of your I records, man. No, they I could be broken what, with T.J. I, I, Simmons. I, I, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I'm going to be – and I just talked to Conjar out there, and Conjar He's was saying he didn't want, he want, he didn't want uh, Medicavis to break his records. And I tell you, I did, don't did want people really to break him. That? He did say that. Because you know what's funny? <laughs> he Last year at Terry and White, he goes – uh, he already thought his record was broken. And I'm like, you definitely knew your record wasn't broken. Yeah, yeah. He'll be no, joining you don't us want so it. we can ask him about yes, that. Yes, yes. You tell him I accidentally ratted him out. Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, it, I don't want him to. But, you know, it, so be it. Records are made to be broken. And, and, you know, things happen and the game develops and, and stuff moves on. And if they do, God bless them. But, honestly, I don't want them to. What is that like? I mean, you're, you're such a, a big supporter of Temple Athletics. And... You don't want your records to be broken, but if it does happen, you got to give credit where credit is due, right? right? Oh, you always got to give credit where credit is due. You know, there, there were there were people that came before me, like Zach Dixon and what have you, and you know, th there were certain numbers that they put up that I that I, thank God that not Heisman that, that finalist I got to. numbers though. <laughs> no, but I got to. But you know what? It, it's you know, I, I, and I had this talk with Matt Brown. I did. I told Matt. I said, Matt, like we're a reflection of one another. You know what I mean? If Matt Brown goes out and Matt Brown scores a touchdown. It's like a, a Temple running back just scored. It's like Paul Palmer just scored, you know. So that's kind of the way it is. If, if, if he goes out and he does well, we all look good. Like, I look good. You look good because you're a Temple guy. The team looks I good. Coach look Rules. Yeah, there you go. Look good, feel You got good. a face, face for radio. <laughs> that's the motto. Both of you guys. <laughs> face for talking. radio. You're on the radio I know it. I know it. I know. I'm on the decline. Man. I used to be a good-looking guy. Now I'm on the decline. We're joined by a Temple legend. Paul Palmer right now as the chair and white game is about to kick off here from Edinburgh Olsen Hall on 10th and Diamond in North Philadelphia. And, Paul, this is an offensive line last year that did struggle. A lot of that had to do with inexperience, but also injuries really plagued that unit. And Temple's going to want to run the football this year with the stable of running backs. What did you see from the offensive line last year, and how can they open up holes for the running back and pass protect for P.J. Walker? I think, again, I think it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a – Tick for tat. I think the, the, the offensive line had obviously had to do a better job. And it's kind of tough when people get injured and people moved around and people are being stuck in there. But there's certain times where the offensive line does good enough and the running backs need to do a little better. You know what I mean? You, you, you got to make each other look good. You know, my, my senior year at Temple, I had a bunch of sophomores and juniors on the line. And, I, and I, until they got their feet underneath them, I kind of made them look good. You know what I mean? And then once they got their feet, they obviously made me look good. But um, it's a little tip for tat. You got you to gotta help each other out a little bit. And I feel that about the wide receivers, quarterbacks, and the linemen and running backs. When the linemen do well, you got to make it happen. 
really comes because down to the whole team making yeah. that next step. Yeah, you got you got to you got to do well, and everyone has to do their part. And I, I talk to my high school kids about that. Do your job, do your job, and do your job well, and don't worry about anyone else doing their job. And if you can get eight, nine people at one time doing the right thing, heck, you're doing a pretty daggone good job as a coach. And we'll paint the picture for you right now. The coin toss just happened. It's the cherry and white game. The offense will be in white, and the defense will be in cherry. Leah Still was the honorary captain today, the daughter of Devin Still, who unfortunately underwent cancer, but now she is in remission. And uh, they're here today as uh, Jeremy Scott, in addition to Elijah Robinson, had the connection with Devin Still, the NFL player from Coach the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, also, as Paul Palmer joins us, you're right. It's about surrounding people with pieces. And one guy that wasn't there last year that's now here this year is Zaire Williams. And he's a guy that I think he's going to be playing with a little bit of an extra chip on his shoulder for sitting out last year. Yeah, you know, what? It, it was unfortunate. And a lot of people were kind of questioning this and questioning that. And ultimately, you find out in the end that it, it was his back and he did have a problem. I like Zaire, and I like Zaire a lot. Uh, I'm pulling for him. Of course, I pull for all the backs, but Jamie Gilmore, Zaire, Harper, those guys that have been around, I've got, gotten to know a little bit. I kind of, I, I really care for them, and I really hope they do well. And I hope Zaire does well. I keep telling him, I keep bumping it to him, and I keep telling him, dude, I'm going to give you a call, I'm going to give you a call, and talk to him. But when I do see him and I talk to him, he says everything is doing fine. He seems happy. And also, this is a little bit interesting than Cherry White games in the years past. Because of the injuries, they had to put the offense on one side, the defense on another. And they're doing a lot of Oklahoma drills as this goes on. Uh, Roman Deloche is going at it right now. Just as a former football player, a guy that's around this all the time, that knows what it's like with these old school Oklahoma drills. you got to love this stuff that's going on the field. Love, right love, love the Oklahoma drill. You know, you do the Oklahoma drill and everybody gets crazy if – if the, if the guy on offense does well, all the offensive guys go crazy, as you can see. If the defensive guy does yep. well, the defense goes crazy, the coaches go crazy. Here's the one flaw with the Oklahoma drill, though. The offensive lineman always gets blamed for it because when I played high school football, I didn't have this illustrious high school football career. I only played for two years. I wasn't that good. Uh, I was a big guy, and it's going up against one of those pain-in-the-butt little mini linebackers <laughs> that they put up right against me. And my running back, I secured the guy off to the left, and the guy runs – right to the left side, and then he gets tackled, and the coach is blaming me, and I'm like, coach, your running back's got to be smarter and just go to the right. You need a good back. You need a good back. <laughs> I I'm need a you, Palmer. You need a good back. <laughs> you need one or the other. You need a, a really great lineman, an okay back, or a really great back, an okay lineman. Either way, if, if you can kind of get them both, man, you could do work. So uh, I, I always loved Oklahoma drill. Um, and, you know, with Lloyd, I remember Lloyd Yancey, I'd get tackled him before I even – touch the ground he'd almost be picking me up off the ground like it gets, it gets the offensive lineman pump man it's, it's a nice drill I love it you, you played here in the 80s and to come back and see how the facilities have changed it's, it's got to really surprise you I mean there's a, a practice bubble right off Broad Street the facility here is a state-of-the-art complex last year this game was held at Cardinal O'Hara High School because the turf here was getting redone but just this event, I mean, there's food trucks outside. They're playing music. There's a lot of fans here. Leah still is uh, tossing the <laughs> coin. That's probably going to be on ESPN later. When you see this and how this program has really developed, you know, what comes to mind? Oh, I'm, just, I'm happy. I'm happy. You know, a lot of times older guys, they have a tendency to look back and say, oh, well, we didn't have this and we didn't have that. Well, you know what? We didn't have this and that, but we had more than the guys before us. So God bless these kids. Whatever, whatever, they, whatever they can get, whatever the school can provide for them, um, God bless them. And, again, it's, it's a reflection to me. If Temple football goes out and they play well, it's a reflection on Paul Palmer. It is. <laughs> so let them go out there. Let them play well. I, I want them to win as many games. I hope they give them everything that they want and everything they need. Hell, I'll, I'll come around and hang out with them a little bit with whatever they have. So God bless them. And we spent so much time talking about the offense. The defense was just so stellar last year, and they returned almost everyone. And they were the second in the nation in, red sco uh, in, in scoring defense. They did a really good job in the red zone. How does this defense, though, get better? Because they do have some guys that redshirted last year that are going to play an imperative role on this team. Well, I'll tell you what, one, one of the things that you can't, what, what you really need, the way in which they can get better is to develop the depth of the defense. What happens is, you know, you go out there and you, you, your first 11 guys on defense are great, but then someone gets hurt and you got to plug that hole. And if the second level guys aren't, aren't ready, and sometimes the third level guys, if they're not ready to play, that's where you fall off. So they can do well with what they have, but the guys behind them have to get better to make sure that if anyone gets hurt, there's not a drop off. And it affects the whole defense and affects the whole team. You had such an illustrious career here at Temple University. You were second 
uh, in the Heisman in that 86 season, and you could have made an argument that you were going to win the Heisman if you had a little bit more media coverage here in Philadelphia as it went to Vinny Testaverde, and I get it, it's the quarterback, it's usually a, a quarterback award with the Heisman, but out of all your time at Temple University, if you could pinpoint one memory for me that just stands out from all of them, what's your best Temple memory? Uh, football wise or just Temple in general? I'll tell you what, I, I, <laughs> I'll, go, well, I'll go with in general. My, my best Temple memory, yeah, honestly, was when I came to visit Temple mm -hmm. and uh, Bruce Arians said to me, he said, son, all we want from you is a verbal commitment. And I looked at him and I thought to myself, coach, I have no place else to go. <laughs> we can sign the paperwork right now and we can do it right now. But, uh, and, and, and really, that's it. I mean, that's where it all started for me and I had no place else to go, and, and thank God that, that Bruce Arians and Spencer Prescott and those guys thought enough of me to, uh, to offer me a scholarship, and I'm so glad that I came. And not even just Bruce Arians. You also have some other guys that are in the NFL right now that are playing a really monumental role in developing younger guys in the National Football League and getting wins and having really good teams. Todd Bowles is also another Temple guy. On the Jets, you have all of them, uh, Jaquan Jarrett, Muhammad Wilkerson. Just as an alum, to see some of those former guys still going into the league and having success, just what does that mean to you? Oh, it means a lot. You know, there, there was a time where Temple kind of hit a low and guys weren't getting into the league. But as of late, it seems a lot like when I was here. Guys are getting in the league and guys are playing well in the league. And then not only are guys playing well in the league, but now you're starting to get coaches that are in the league like, you know, Coach Arians and, and Todd is in New York and Keith Armstrong is an established special teams coach with the Atlanta Falcons and all those guys from Temple that are out at Arizona with uh, Coach Arians. So Temple's kind of making his mark. And, if, and some people that don't know about us don't know about us. But if you take, a t if you take time, oh, we have X amount of people coaching and X amount of guys playing the league. Or so and so's from you know from Temple. A lot of people are surprised that don't know Temple football. So we're making our mark. And this is a program that is on the rise, and some seniors on the roster. There's a handful that do have an opportunity to play in the National Football League next year. When you are a senior and you have that thought of okay, I, I have an opportunity to go pro, but I still have to finish this season. What's the mindset like? Because you got to focus on the task at hand, but you, you also have to look bigger picture. You, you absolutely have to. And I tell you what, a lot of kids make the mistake. A lot of kids, it's so sad, a lot of kids make the mistake when they're seniors where they, um, they kind of coast a little bit. They think, oh, I don't want to get hurt for the league. But if you're complacent but out what, there. What exact, and exactly what happens is they look at you and they think, well, this guy's saving himself. He's not playing hard. You know, is that going to affect us as a professional team when his contract is up where he's cruising and he doesn't want to get hurt because there's money come, or free agency is coming up? So you just have to play. You know, I mean, it, there's no promises in football. There's no promises in any sport. You just go out and you just play. You play hard and you kind of let the chips fall where they may. Simple final, as that. Final one here with Paul Boo Boo Palmer before we let him go as we're broadcasting to you live from Edberg Olsen Hall. It's the Cherry and White game. So this is the year that a lot of people think Temple's going to get back into that bowl game and you're number three of Matt Rule. Do you see them getting to that number of improving that six wins and getting back to that bowl game status? Well, you know what? It can only go up. It can only go up. I mean, if, if and, and right now, what he did last year is what everyone thought he'd be doing this year. So we're already ahead of the curve. The recruiting is so consistent. And honest to God. It's been tremendous. Just get, if we're seven and five, we're better. It's bowl game. You know, it, it, it's weird. Like, we were shooting for six games, six games, six games. But the problem is we have to shoot for better than six games because we want to make sure that we get in, not just, oh, we're good enough to get in. We want to make sure we get in. And seven, because seven is a whole lot better. It doesn't seem like much, but seven is a lot better than six wins. And Notre Dame and Penn State will make their way to Lincoln Financial Field. It's going to be quite the scene down in South Philly. Packed got, house, for sure. I got, I got a few friends. I'm gonna, I, I, I made friends with Tony Rice is my roommate from Notre Dame in Barcelona. But since being around, I became friends with uh, Michael Stonebreaker, um, Chris Zurich. Zurich, the D-tackle Zurich? Zurich. The D-tackle right? at Penn State. Yeah. I mean, uh, at uh, Notre Dame. So, uh. I'm hoping that, that they want to put a little wage on. I think I thought we kicked I thought we kicked Notre Dame's behind a couple years ago. So I'm kind of looking forward to Notre Dame, as a matter of fact. And if especially we, if we made some field goals in that game too, it could have been a whole different, different ball score. game. Yep. And I know. that was a really uh, inexperienced roster. But what's that ring you got on your finger? This is a uh, All American. This is actually it. it it's a one off. I think. Um, I, well, I know Coach Arians got it made for me. Mm -hmm. It was never presented to me. He called me. Fine gesture. I got by called him. down to his office. I went down there. He said. 
I have some for you. No, they told me I had an All-American weekend to go to. They said, they need your ring size. Get your ring size. I ran downtown, got my ring size, gave it to them. I went away for the All-American weekend, came back, and I thought to myself, they didn't give me a ring. Well, they were, Temple was getting one made. B.A. was getting one made, and he called me to his office. He just gave it to me in his office. And I, and I wear it. I mean, I, I, there's very few times that I ever really take it off. I have ever have taken it off. Some nice bling right there. That's I know we nice. said we were going to let you well, go. I love but it. Make sure you take it off when you're by the toilet because you don't want to <laughs> right. take it down the toilet, too. What kind of guy I don't think you get that one back. <laughs> no. You can't put that in right. No, no, no. <laughs> what kind of guy is Bruce Arians, though? He's taking a couple shots at Chip Kelly here in Philly. That's a yeah. whole different story, but just coming off of Coach of the Year honors. You know what? Uh, old school type of guy. Coach is going to take shots because Coach is competitive. The, the, he, coach is very extremely competitive, mm -hmm. extremely competitive. So, Coach, he's not going to back down to anyone. He's not going to – not gonna always bite his tongue when he should probably bite his tongue, but um, you know if, if I you love his old school mentality. Talk it too. if you talk it, then you gotta walk it. And so far as as a head coach, he's talked it and he's walked it. And even as assistant coaches, as an assistant coach, he's talked it and he's walked it. So um, they're gonna do well if, if they get behind him. He makes you believe that you can do everything that he's telling you that you can do. Um, he did it to me and he's still doing it now, 25, 30 years later. Well, I know he's told me in the past he loves you like a son, so we do appreciate you coming on yes, up sir. here today at the roof, and uh, we'll see you throughout the course of the season, which should be a fun one yes. over at Lincoln Financial Field. We appreciate it, Paul. All right. Thank you very much. Enjoy yourself today. There Always. is the great Thank Paul Palmer joining us on set.